Like I said, I am really good at listening and I could actually follow a brand new song, which is, of course, always going to be a t slight bit later because as I listen and sing, so I can take any melody and I have one here, but I have to put it really loud because my voice is so loud and it actually sounds loud inside, especially now since it's not really like totally warmed up yet. Because when it's warm up, it's a different subject. It's like more, anyhow, more outside, less inside. So let's see what I can do. I have a violin concerto. I can't return it from the beginning. Take an octave higher, like in the rear, I didn't know which one is. <laughs> See, there's hyenas, so I need to know for starters where it's gonna go to in order to sing it correctly. And then it has to be in my tessitura, which is oh, all the reels were not in my tessitura, they were like in a weird tessitura. I couldn't do it straightforward, so I had to choose or very high or very low, and without the encouragement of having actually something to say. I choose the lower one. Okay, never mind. Let's stop here right now. So, as well as certain instruments, like, um, well, any instruments in an orchestra, they have a different tuning. Oh, leave it on in the background. Sure, of course. So, even though you, in the register, you play the apparently same note it doesn't sound the same note in the instrument so we say it's the instrument on that note and the instrument on that tuning like the c flute is tuned on c and that is what i made clear in the beginning of this c flute and musical website so each each person each voice has a different time where they can actually enhance themselves the best so a bass is a bass it's not a soprano and it has the most warm and comfortable um, most reliable notes to sing I'm gonna try to find really easy words right now is in a uh, his central register is different than it is from another type of voice a bass is different from a tenor and the tenor is definitely different from a soprano or from a or maybe not from a soprano maybe the tenor actually is more equivalent to the soprano but it's an octave lower of course because now we're talking male voice um, opposite the female voice so whenever you have like choir music, it is simple choir music, any choir music, it is always divided within mainly four voices, which is for the female to which is soprano, and then it is contralto. And in opera it's different. There is soprano, mezzo soprano and contralto. Because the operatic quantity of notes, we call it register is wider, broader. So a regular voice can sing only so many notes, you can count them on, on the two hands. But in opera you have to, you need like up to five hands to count the notes. A operatic voice is able to sing. And this happens not because they're born like that, but because they practice very long time to achieve each of the notes in a healthy way, of course. Anyone can st start screaming up and you, about that is very hard and very damaging will not attain all the notes and definitely not the beauty and will absolutely finish uh, their voice. It takes very long time, I said, for lighter voices about four to five years and for deeper, darker, heavier voices about seven to eight years. And it took me like nine years, I have to say, because my voice is like extraordinary white and versatile too. I can sing all of them. I can sing mezzo soprano and I can also sing contra alto. You just need to vocalize on it and formalize it in your in your voice. There is a decision to be made. And I can make the decision each each area. So singing on this repertoire is pretty much outrageous. No one has ever done that. I mean really singing it, not just hitting on the notes. Hitting on the notes is like you take a keyboard 
and you hit a note on the keyboard and you think now you have a nice string instrument going, but you don't. Oh, it's the keyboard, now I play the cello, now I play the violin. No, you don't. It's not the same. It's not a, it's not a race. It's about the beauty, it's also about the adequacy because at the, at the end it has to come together in harmony. Orchestras have to be in harmony. You cannot just throw in a keyboard in an orchestra. The strings have one type of feeling and, the, and within them violins and violas have a different type and the cello, if it would be there, it has a different type. It's all very different and the trumpets have a different type of feeling, of emotion or whatever they bring in in any place. That's where you cannot just interchange instruments and any music. I mean, some you may, but others you don't. And if you do that, and if you adjust it, you will definitely create a different type of outcome. So in choirs, we got the soprano and the contraltos, and then we got the male voices, which is the tenor and the bass. And in opera, you have also the baritone, and bass is almost never happening. And in order to sing in, in a choir bass, you just have to be lower than the t tenor. But in order to sing an opera bass, you have to have a completely different voice. You have to have like an amazing dark instrument. Just listen to a few basses. That is something people are born with. But still, every opera singer had to work very hard in order to achieve to get an operatic voice. An operatic voice is a voice which is trained, which is built, which is made. And it took a long time and it took focus and attention. No matter how much they have not achieved to have the right technique in opera, they still have a lot going on to actually sing it. I just wanted to kind of make that clear. So when you have these instruments and they're tuned on this and that note, it means that you play the same note, the same emphasis, it looks like it, like on the, see, how do you even say it? How can I explain it to you? Because in German it's Stieg. When you have a guitar where you put your left hand in, where you play the chords or the violin, it's called Stieg. How's it called in English again? Must you know? There where you put the fingers in, even it looks the same, it's on the same, you saw opposite to, to what? Is there any opposite at all? A keyboard is very straightforward, wherever you put your fingers on, you got the note, that's why a keyboard is the excellent reference above everything else, because there's nothing else but the keyboard. You might have tuning forks, but that's really hard to grasp, and they only play one note. They're hard to activate somehow. And any other tuning instrument is based on the keyboard. So the keyboard is your absolute reference or piano, keyboard, piano, whatever that keyboard is. And all the others kind of adjust to that keyboard. That's why I put the keyboard as a reference. You can take a violin, but how do you know, would, how do you know which is the right tune of the string? How do you know? You have to have a reference. Now, what I have to say this, I can tune the guitar without having any reference. I did it. I did it. I didn't know I was actually documented. I don't know. I just, I play the guitar, I listen. That's the thing. That's what I do. I listen. It seems quite simple, right? To me, that. How would I ever, how can I engage with music if I wouldn't listening? Why would I even go there if I wouldn't listening? So I listen and yeah, and then I notice and then I, it, I didn't make an effort. It just stuck with me. And sometimes in order to tune it, I just don't want to go through the process of putting my fingers on and doing the boom, boom. The light tone or the ding, 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 ding. I just want to do. Drrr. Can I repeat it now? I don't know. Can I? Okay, so here it is. If I take a guitar in my hand, the guitar has a different sound than another instrument. Da, obviously, right? So it is the sound of the guitar which inspires me ultimately to do tune the guitar. It's not about making sounds. It's about something which goes in harmony, and there is more to it. The guitar is made out of usually wood, and yes. When I was 14, I was offered actually, before I was 14, when I was 13, I was offered to have a new instrument. I, I was, I played the, not that I wanted to, but I kind of did it. And that was my substitute for piano. So I, I finished that little instrument and now it was time to get a larger one with more possibilities, like a larger keyboard. And I, I said, I didn't want it more of that. I did not like the musical style. And so I got instead what I wanted and that was a guitar. So I went to pick it out with someone who knew about guitars and and I was asked would you like to have a wooden guitar or would you like to have these new ones and what's the name of these new ones I associate them with Joan Armatrading opportunity get it down oh I remember I rode my bike and I listened in my headphones to, to Joan Armatrading and I felt lonely very lonely 
Anyhow, so she's got that modern guitar, whatever the name is, but it's not wood. It has a weird shape, which is kind of roundish, but I kind of could not get my head to have that. I'm maybe traditional, I'm ancient, or see, I'm super modern, I'm post, post, post modern, but on many ways, I like things which are, is it ancient, is it antique? It just felt right. So maybe now I can express it because of the wood, sounds in harmony with, I'm not sure. See, I do not really enjoy electric guitars at all. Just a mere fashion that I have to actually have an amplifi amplifi amplifier, an external amplification. It's already distorting my musical harmonious sound. So I'm going to post this now.